But that was a special type of Christ. Samuel was not a prophet and a priest and a king, but he was a prophet and he was a priest and as a judge in Israel, the last of the line of judges, he was the foreshadowing of the time when God would give the nation a king. And so he made his circuit through the whole of the nation. And as he made his circuit, he taught the people. He made sacrifices on behalf of the people in the various towns that he visited in his circuit. And he judged the people, an office that was later taken over by the kings, especially the God-fearing kings. So he was an extremely unusual man whom God used in remarkable ways. That Hannah dedicated him to the Lord meant that he was not any longer really her son but that he belonged totally in the whole of his life to the Lord. Now, that's the history, that's the example of Hannah, and it is from that that we must find our calling with respect to our children. We must dedicate our children to the Lord. That's our calling. We must emulate Hannah. All our children. If we do not dedicate them to the Lord, we do not understand the demands of His covenant. This is based on the fact that God is pleased to save His church in a line of continued generations. And not only we, but our children too, belong to the Lord. They are His. To do with them as He sees fit. We must dedicate them to the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean that all our children have to be ministers, of course. There is no longer any temple or tabernacle in which, to which we bring our children that they may serve there. We live in the new dispensation. Types and shadows are gone. We live in the reality of the coming of Christ and of the outpouring of the Spirit. And we live in the reality of the kingdom of Christ, which Christ has established through His Spirit in the hearts of His people. But it is possible for parents to dedicate their children to all sorts of different things. And that happens sometimes also in the church. And it happens, in fact, rather frequently in the church. That's a disturbing thing. What are some of the things to which parents, covenant parents, dedicate their children? Well, one is certainly this. Make a lot of money. Become financially independent. <coughs> Live in the world with all the resources of wealth at your disposal. Get a good job. Get a job that's highly, that has a high payment, a high salary. Be careful that you save your money so that you're dedicated to work in this world, to make your way successfully in this present time. I even hear that sometimes about, from parents who talk to their children about their education. A child may come home from school and he may say to his father, I don't know why I have to study all this stuff. It'll never do me any good. And the father will respond and say to that child, look, if you want to get a good job and you want to have a high paying job, and you want, want to gain for yourself the good things of life, you better go to school and study hard because those who complete their education and even go on to college are those who become professionals and those who will earn a lot of money. So they dedicate their child even as far as his education is concerned to the mere accumulation of earthly things. 
They're constantly after their children. Work, study, get good grades so that you may be successful in life. Is that why God gives us children, do you think? I should say not. Our children have to earn their living by the sweat of their brow. But they're not in this world to become wealthy. <clears throat> I know parents, some even, although infrequently, in the church, who dedicate their children to sports. And from the time those little tots can hold a ball in their hands, they're out in the backyard with their fathers throwing a ball back and forth or kicking a football. And every spare moment with a child is spent in teaching the child the skills of a particular kind of sport in the hopes that their child will grow up and become superior in sports, be a captain of a football team or a baseball team or a basketball team, be a star on the team and go on to the sports, the pro sports where money comes in in waves, millions of dollars at a time. They dedicate their children to being successful in sports. That's a dreadful, dreadful thing. And so you can find parents, and not infrequently, whose sole motivation in dedicating their children is to make their children successful in the world. Hannah was totally uninterested in that. She wanted in the first place, and she vowed that before she even conceived Samuel in her womb, she wanted Samuel in the first place to be a Nazarite. She dedicated him to the calling of a Nazarite, to be a living protest against the ungodliness and worldliness of the nation of Israel, the covenant people of Israel. She dedicated him to that, and that was what was drilled into his heart and into his mind, and that's why she brought him to the tabernacle. In the second place, by bringing him to the Lord and dedicating him to the Lord, by placing him in the Lord's house, she said to Samuel, in effect, by her actions, you are placed in this world for the purpose of the cause of Jesus Christ and of his covenant people. You must devote your life to that and to that exclusively. That was her vow. Samuel did that. He was a son of the covenant. He gave his life to the service of God. When we dedicate our children to the Lord, <coughs> we bring them up by teaching them the only thing that matters in life, that which is alone of value, is that you dedicate yourself to the service of Christ and to the cause of the church of Jesus Christ of which you are a part, and that the church stands at the center of your life and the life of your children and revolves around it so that all your life is consecration to the cause of God and of his covenant. That's what it means to dedicate our children to the Lord. 